Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm gonna let you listen to a Spaces that was done with News Nation's Brian Enton and it follows the news coming out about Kaylee having more significant damage done to her during the attack. And so, well, yeah, I wanted to play this for you. Um, and this follows their show. Hey, everybody, it's Brian. Um, I just wanted to get on here for just a little bit after the special. Um, I hope that um, we did a, a good job, you know, updating everyone on the case and um, paying tribute to the victims. Um, and I hope, you know, and their families, because I just feel so, so bad for them. And I, I wanted to do a respectable, good, good job with it tonight. So I hope that it all, I, I hope by uh, it all worked out okay. Um, I'm just waiting for Paige, the producer, to get in here. And then we will get started. One second. Sorry. I you think I know how to do the spaces by now. Uh better, but I'm still I see Paige in here. But let's see if I can Paige, can you hear me? Can you unmute? I sent you an invite, Paige, if you hear me. Sorry, guys, one second. We're just trying to figure this out. I think we're both just exhausted, too. I think you just have to unmute, Paige. All right, I just accepted you. There, there we go. Oh, yeah, there we are. Look it's almost us. it's almost like it's like the little audio issue we had in the show. We had another um, audio. Oh please. my gosh, you would think that we would know how to do this by now. Um, so thank you guys for joining. Um thank you guys for those of you who watched the special. We had the um the new information uh off the top and, and we talked about it throughout basically um that that Kaylee's injuries were significantly more brutal than Maddie's, um, that they were in the same room together um, up on the third floor, which is really interesting to think about that the killer, you know, went up to the third floor because right. there's a balcony up there, there's a um, a slider, but th there's no access to the ground. So, so if you were the killer, I mean, there's not an easy way to, to, to leave from the third floor. You'd have to go back down to the second floor, which is why some people are thinking, could that indicate that, you know, that, that Kaylee was targeted up on, up on the third floor? I mean, what do you, what do you make of it, Paige? Yeah, I think it's something a lot of us have been wondering about, about who and which floor and what path the killer may have taken. Um, but I think learning that, learning that they were in Maddie's room, right? We've looked at those floor plans. It's the one away from the balcony. Um, it makes you wonder, you know, we heard the father, uh, Steve, Kaylee's dad, say before, you know, he didn't have to go up there. Um, a lot of people wondering what that meant. I think maybe this gives us a little bit more clarity. Yeah, I felt like the hopefully the victims' stories really came through um, in the piece. Just you know, trying to enjoy their college experience. Just just really really good young people. It seemed like, and um, that to me, you know, the the victims' story that we did. I, I just felt like that really brought the whole thing just made it more real because it, like it, we've talked about this it's so easy to get wrapped up in the investigation but like you know these were real people with real families that are really like hurting right now right and what we really tried to do was dive in and, and see what we could learn about them and their personalities and the little things that they liked and the little quirks that we all have to really try to personalize them um 
because that's how you understand why their families are fighting so hard for them and why they should be. Um, you know, we talk about it before, but you see yourself in some of them and your past experiences. Um, so that was something that I'm really hoping that, that we did a job well done on was making sure that, you know, people really felt compelled and learned about the victims and just sort of related to these families. Yeah. And by the way, everybody listening, if you guys want to ask a question, um, like spaces just looks different to me. Um, you can, um, why don't I usually, I used to see all the little icons, but I don't see them now, but you can, um, just comment. Like I posted the spaces on my, um, on my Twitter where it says, join me in my space. You can just like comment under there with your question and I'll keep refreshing it, um, to see, um, what you guys have to say. So let me see here if there's anything. Could Kaylee's wounds be more severe because she fought back harder or was trying to protect Maddie and not necessarily that she was targeted? I mean, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that before, Paige. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe she was trying to defend Maddie. I mean, they were best friends forever. That wouldn't be surprising at all. Right. It kind of gives you like chills thinking about it, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it really does. I think um, once we, you know, we still are waiting, we've heard that some of the victims have had the defensive wounds and we don't necessarily know for sure, for sure, who is what, but obviously that would shed a lot of insight into what happened in that house too. Someone else is saying, didn't we always know that the perpetrator went to the third floor? Yes, we did know that. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that, yeah, because from the beat for a while, police have been saying that um, the victims were on the second and third floor and not the first floor. But what we didn't know until tonight was that Kaylee's injuries were more severe. Um, so that's sort of the new the new element and, and that they were in um, Maddie's Maddie's bed. Yeah. And a couple of people asking for the clarity of if Kaylee's wounds were worse than everyone or just Maddie. And from what we know, the information was the comparison to Maddie. Yeah. Some of you are telling me about like some police activity on campus. So we'll, we'll check that out too. I mean, it's likely, you know, probably, I don't know, probably not related, but we'll, we'll look into it. There's a lot of comments about that. Um, I'm just reading more comments here. Where are the surviving roommates? Um, we don't know. I mean, they've, according to police, they've been cleared. Mm -hmm. Um, but we don't know exactly where they were. A lot of people have been asking me if they're at the vigil. Um, there was a story earlier. Did you happen to catch it, Paige? They, they released a statement through, I think, a pastor. Have you seen yep. that? Yep, that's right. They did at one of the celebrations of life. Um, they spoke about their four roommates, um, obviously, in, in these pretty touching tributes. Um, so that was the first time that we really heard something um, from them about what happened. You know, you can imagine a lot going on for them too as as surviving this incident and everything that comes along with that but yes we did hear from them they had just really touching things to say about them you know uh the ethan and Zana, the perfect duo they had they were fun and passionate and good energy and kaylee's described as a second mom to some of them so just really really touching things from them for the first time someone's asking has any more info on jack from the food truck came about has his alibi been confirmed or has he been checked back into? Have you seen the footage? Um, so yes, I've seen um, the footage. Uh, in terms of the alibis, so we don't know the specific alibis of the people who've been cleared. That is something that Kaylee's family is frustrated by. They feel that they should be given that information. If someone's cleared, they want to know what the alibi is. Of course, like a ton of law enforcement experts have spoken and said, you know, just because you're on the cleared list doesn't mean that that someone's always going to be cleared. So, you know, we don't really know um, how that's going to play out. Let's right. See. Brian, I thought one of the interesting parts from your sit down with Kaylee's family um, was when the dad was talking a lot about the family itself doesn't like the whole connotation, the whole idea that comes with this being targeted. Do you want to talk about that more or at least being labeled targeted? Yeah. I mean, I think that that's just been so confusing 
for since the beginning. Like no one really knows what that means, including the families. Who was targeted? Was the house targeted? The story from police has changed a couple of times. It was interesting. Kaylee's dad doesn't like that term because it makes it sound like the girls did something wrong to be targeted, whereas you know, they likely didn't. They were just like going out and then coming home. Like basically anyone could be targeted. Right. Um, and then also like it was interesting, he kind of referenced that like it almost also pins the families against each other. Like, you know, it, it, it's like, oh, well, your daughter was the one who was targeted. So, you know, it, it, it just create it just made, makes him uneasy, which I, I mean, no one I still don't understand exactly what that means or mm -hmm. like, you know, um, and and I think her family thinks that it, it was a way to sort of keep people calm here and not use the word random. Um, just because this is a college town and, you know, you don't want to freak people out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really confusing. And they also sort of cleared up or at least shared their insight into allegations of a stalker. Yes, that's a good, yeah, that's a good one. Um, in terms of a new nugget, um, there was this confusion about whether she had a stalker. Initially, there were reports that the family thought she did. Police said there was no evidence. Um, her family told me that there was not a stalker that they know of. There was no specific stalker that they know of. Right. Um, so let me look through these. Um, there's a lot more here. I'm seeing, this is uh, from Lexi. I'm seeing people saying there's phone records of Kaylee texting somebody that she heard a noise downstairs that night. Do you anything about that? That's a good question. And her family talked a lot about this. Apparently Kaylee was kind of like a nervous Nelly. Like, you know, she would call her sister um, frequently and be like, oh, I heard a noise outside or I heard a, a tapping on the window. And that was like totally common for her to do. And they'd be like, calm down. There's probably no one out there. Like that happened a lot of the time. So they said, like, it wouldn't be unusual for her to, like, be freaked out about things. Um, let's see what else is on here. I'm just looking at the... Oh, um, let's talk about police activity, because there really wasn't anything going on today. Um, and, and not during the special, right? Um, no, it's been quiet about... out there. Yeah, you talked about private security now outside the house, but, you know, if you joined us yesterday during the spaces, there was activity. Yeah, so today it's been quiet. Um, I think that maybe because there's so few Moscow police, they don't want to have to have an officer sitting there all the time. So they've hired like a private security company. So there's like a security guard outside the house now. Not You may have noticed in a lot of the videos, it's not Moscow police. Um but uh, yeah, no activity today. Yesterday was interesting, though. Late, late at night when we were out there, just kind of watching the um, the detective showed up and then left with the with the big brown bags. So we we still don't know um, what that was like. Right, was but the the thing? interesting thing about that was that it was the first floor. Yeah, yeah, they were kind of zeroing in on the first floor bedroom on the left side. If you're looking at the house, they had the light on in there, and they were. Um, like just really focused on that. So another question from Lisa, do the families have victim advocates assigned to them? I know FBI has them, not sure about Idaho authorities. I certainly hope so because um, I just feel so bad for them. And being at um, Kaylee's house, I will say there was a lot of family there, a lot of extended family. I mean, they clearly have a very good support system. Um, and they're like a really close family. So that, that was nice to see. I think they really have e each other right now, but this was so heartbreaking. Her dad was telling me like, just how unimaginable this is. She, he was saying, you know, not only did we lose Kaylee, he's like, if something had ever happened to Kaylee, he was like, Maddie would be sitting on this couch right now with us. Mm -hmm. And so he said, it's like unimaginable to them to have lost Kaylee and Maddie. Like they, it's just they can't process it because Maddie, there was a Maddie was like another daughter. Maddie would have been the one to, to tell them that it was going to be okay, you know. Right. So, um, just looking here. Are Kaylee's wounds more severe than the two on the second floor? We don't know that, and I want to make that clear. What I've learned is that her wounds were more severe than Maddie's. Um, but I don't know how that compares to, 
um, the victims on the second floor? I don't know the answer to that. Um, it's just going through here. So I think it was someone close to the girls. We really don't know. I mean, do you have a take on that page? You no, know, we don't. But Zana's mom definitely does. Uh, she told Ashley Banfield she thinks that it's someone close to them. Um, you know, even closer than a suggested potential stalker or something like that. She thinks um, that it's someone that the that the four of them trusted, specifically the girls. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is what's confounding about this to so many people, right? The no signs of forced entry, um, the timing of how this all happened, the fact that there's nobody yet on a radar that we're aware of from police. Um, I don't know. I, I just think that that's one of the things that's really, really hard to put your finger on what it might be. A lot of you messaging me about police activity. I think someone must have posted something online. So we're, we'll go check it out in a minute here. I'll go drive over there. Yeah, everyone, you know, and we But we you have to remember, this. yeah, it's like everybody freaks. It, hopefully, it's probably nothing, but we'll, we'll go drive by. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about this on News Nation, right? And it's this whole thing. And it's the whole reason why we wanted to go and stay in Moscow is like, you, you're looking at this small town that's just spooked, right? There's no better word. It's just, um, they're on edge. They hear something, you know, you can't blame them. I would too. But we've seen it in terms of the police reports that are up. And some of them are for, you know, suspicious circumstances. And you hear things like snow prints in the back behind the patio. You hear something like they saw a man outside the house. And right. you have to wonder how much of this is fueled by what's happened. Yeah, you've actually, you went over all those police reports that day. From yeah. um, So you saw, I mean, like people are freaked out. There's a lot, like the number of reports from people reporting unusual activity. It like, I think more than like doubled. Yeah. Yeah, it's up quite a bit. And so are welfare checks because people are like worried about their loved ones, right? All of a sudden they don't answer the phone for a second and, and you're worried, you know, God forbid something terrible happened to them. Um, that's just why, you know, you think of the families and your heart goes out to them. But, you know, these people too in this town really just need some peace of mind, I think, and, and figuring out what's happening. Yeah. Okay, well, I think I'm going to go drive by just because everybody's messaging me. Yeah. Um, it's probably nothing, but I'll go drive by, but, but thank you everybody for, for watching tonight. Um, we really appreciate it. And, um, Paige, thanks for all your hard work on the special and we're not going anywhere. So we will be here and hopefully we will have some kind of update on the case. Um, especially for the victim's families. Cause you know, it's just, it, it's, I mean, I said it at the end of the show, but it, it's, just like torture for them. So totally, totally. Um, if you weren't able to catch it, um, there's one more shot at a re air, uh, 11 o'clock central time, which will be midnight Eastern time. What would that be for your time, Brian? Nine o'clock. Oh God. Don't um, make me figure out the time. Right. Right. I think so you're confused. two hours. You're two hours behind. Yeah. Me. We're two hours behind you. So yeah. nine o'clock Pacific time. If you missed it, you'll be able to catch it 11 o'clock central time, midnight Eastern time. Um, if you live outside of the United States or you cut the cable, which we wish you would come back. Um, we'll, we'll get the whole thing up on YouTube. So you'll be able to watch yeah. it. Too. Mrs. Blair is asking, Brian, are you allowed to share your personal thoughts on the case? Your assumptions? You guys know me. Stick to the facts. You got, you know, that's not our stick to uh, the facts. We stick to the facts. So, yep. We'll be waiting around. Uh, one thing on my radar is when we're going to hear from police again, right? Like, yeah. I another press conference. I said it yesterday. We're a week and a half from the last press conference. It was the day before on um, Thanksgiving. I'm eager to hear when they're going to come out and talk to us again. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right, everybody have a good night. We'll, um, we will, I'll tweet if anything happens interesting and uh, we'll always have the latest on News Nation and thank you again for watching tonight and thank you for all Stay your Stay warm, Brian. Stay warm. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.